Hey friends, welcome to Symphony Storytime where we share two of our favorite things, books and music. My name's Amy and I'll be reading to you today and I want you to say hi to my friend from the Oregon Symphony who will be providing the music. Hey guys, my name's Alicia, I play the flute, and you might remember that the flute sounds like this. We think the flute is the perfect instrument to go with our book today. The book is called When the Moon is Full. Let's get started. When the Moon is Full, A Lunar Year, by Penny Pollock, illustrated by Mary Azarian, published by Little Brown and Company. Full moons come, full moons go, softening nights with their silver glow. They pass in silence, all untamed, but as they travel, they are named. January, the wolf moon. Native Americans believed that wolves became restless in January. The weather chills, the night is long. Wolf lifts his head in lonely song. His notes float high, his notes drift low, mournful in the moonlight glow. February, the snow moon. February is a month of heavy snow. Snow falls all day into the night, snuggling the world in downy white. Old man moon hides his face behind a curtain of winter's lace. March, the sap moon. Native Americans and the early European settlers collected sap from trees for syrup in March. Cold nights, warm days, sap is sure to run. Moon looms in the branches, waiting for the sun. April, the frog moon. In April, life bursts forth following the cold of winter. Frog sits in the marshes, throats bellowed tight, feeling quite romantic, calling through the night. Come, my love, my love, my love, come be mine tonight. May, the flower moon. Many flowers bloom in May. Lilies of the valley ring each silent bell when May's bright moon lightens up the dell. Furry-footed creatures scurry here and there, dancing to the music they can hear quite well. June, the strawberry moon. Strawberries ripen in June. Native Americans and the European settlers collected wild berries.
We feast all night in moon's spotlight, forgetting all our foes, tramping on the berries that squish between our toes. July, the buck moon. Bucks sprout their first antlers in July. Young bucks in the hayfields, antlers held aloft, moonbeams slanting down, show them velvet soft. August, the green corn moon. Corn was the basic food for most Native Americans. It ripens in August. Many tribes celebrated the green corn festival. Moonbeams touch the cornfield, laying shadows stripe by stripe down the endless rows of corn, tall and green and ripe. September, the harvest moon. September marks the final gathering of most crops. This is celebrated in many cultures. Squirrel rests in ancient oak, tail wrapped round her like a cloak looking over the moonlit field where Mother Earth's generous yield of endless acorns, nuts, and seeds is quite enough to meet all needs. October, the hunter's moon. In October, the moon rises quickly, adding to the light of the setting sun. This gives hunters extra time to hunt. Hush, young hare, beware, take care. Danger fills the night. Pray a cloud will shade the moon, putting out its light. November, the beaver moon. Beavers were important to Native Americans who hunted them for food and to sell their skins. Black and icy pond mirrors moon so round, while hidden in the beaver's lodge, coziness abounds. December, the long night moon. December nights are the longest nights of the year. December moon floats on cloud's crest, as if to take a little rest. No one sees this, no one knows, except some sleepy-eyed old crows.
Wasn't that interesting to hear some of the different names of the full moons? And the flute sounded so beautiful with those poems. It's time for me to leave you now. I hope I'll see you again soon. But before you go, Alicia's going to play some music for you. I'll see you next time. Hi again, everyone. I want to tell you a little bit about the music I played for you today. There is a long, rich history of flute playing in the indigenous communities and First Nations of North America. I play a metal flute with keys, but wooden flutes with no keys have been played for centuries in the Americas. I wanted to honor these musicians with music from different communities. And one of my favorites that I play today is a traditional melody from the Zuni tribe, which I played at the start of the book. Here it is again, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi guys, it's Alicia. I'm back at home where I practice for my Oregon Symphony concerts. And there are a lot of concerts, so I have a lot of practicing to do. It's a full-time job. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the flute. The flute is a woodwind instrument, but do you think it's made out of wood? Doesn't look like it, does it? It's made out of metal. Specifically, my flute is made out of gold, but there's also silver flutes, and some people have titanium flutes. I'm serious. The flute is played by blowing over the embouchure hole. Now I know it's really tempting when you see a flute to play it like this. It does make a great sound. It kind of sounds like a windstorm. But that's not how we play the flute. Because when you blow over it, you can change the notes by moving your fingers over the keys. Now, one cool thing about a video is that you can see this really up close. Look at all these keys. Wow, so many. Flute is pretty long. Starts here, do, 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 all the way down. <gasps> ah. So I'm gonna play the notes the lowest to almost the highest. I don't wanna break your speaker, so I'm gonna keep it a little lower. But here you go. I'm gonna move my fingers while I'm blowing over the embouchure hole. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? When you're listening to the flute in the orchestra, it often plays the highest line. Maybe sometime the piccolo is higher, but mostly it's a flute. So you can really hear it a lot in the orchestra. And I can't wait to see you guys in the fall when you come to our concerts in the hall. But before then, promise me you're gonna watch the rest of the Symphony Storytime videos because I wanna know what your favorite instrument is. I hope it's the flute, but I'll forgive you if it's another instrument. All right, guys, thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon. Bye.